Yeah, you know what show it is. I'm Max, joined by Cybe of the Triple S League. We got a lot of stuff to go through. Let's just go through it right now. Sony State of Play. Ooh, kind of uh, underwhelming. Yeah, it's like, whatever. Like, uh, but, uh, Monster Hunter Wilds was cool. Monster Hunter Wilds <laughs> looks looks good because there there's a, a long team that's been behind it. And that's a good thing because they kind of know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, I, but... I agree. A little on the <laughs> underwhelming side for pretty much everything else. Yeah, like, compared to the last few, it just, it's, it didn't really feel like there was much, th- like, there was one or two things that I'm sure for people that are, like, mega fans of those franchises are going to be happy, but mostly just meh. I, I was kind of surprised. Maybe they're just saving, like, all their big guns for the Summer Game Fest, because, I don't know, maybe they figured they'd have more eyes there. But I, I don't know. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense now that I say it out loud. But anyway, we'll, we'll go a little bit more in depth with Monster Hunter Wilds in a second. I want to go through all the announcements that were made. We have to start with this whole Concord thing. Saib, they spent 25% of this presentation pushing this thing. I don't think I've ever seen something so generic in my life. Like, I feel like Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League has more personality than this game. It's like the whole point of the game was to be like, okay, a lot of people are hating on Overwatch 2 right now. Let's try to provide them something else. And I get the feeling yeah. that what this game is going to end up as is sort of like the next Lawbreakers I think that's what it was called, where the gameplay was decent, but it was just, it couldn't hold up to Overwatch. I think that was the game that was competing with Overwatch at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, so it, it it couldn't compete because, and, I, and I've, I've talked a lot about this in the past, is that the in Lawbreakers you played the scum and villainy of, of the, of that universe, right? Of that world, right? And what you played were what you would find not if you went to star star wars prison right you go to a star wars prison you've got like han solo and greedo and um and some of those like uh ruthless bounty hunters right that are really cool that that look you know almost frightening in their in their um appearance but strangely kind of like cool looking right like the, mm-hmm. i'm thinking specifically i'm thinking of the the twig type like uh robot guy who's yeah. really really cool in mandalorian it's 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 really really awesome um no 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 you're playing what you see if you go to an actual prison in real life <laughs> you know you're seeing the 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 like super hardcore gang bangers and um the the just like the absolute like lowest level scum of the the hardcore blank addicts you know that are that are just like they're on their last like legs they're visually disgusting that's why that game failed its gameplay was actually really really good Mm -hmm. but when you kept on logging in to see essentially just like a grotesque version of what humanity is it's like and and not in the cool way right like there's there's grotesque that you can do you know in science fiction that is cool and then there's like the hey um you know the realistic version of it do you ever see uh that fake well i guess it was part of the the movie as far as its plot point but the the um tropic thunder oh yeah like the fake uh yeah yeah where they talk about like you never go full Yes. blank word yes right yes, yes. <laughs> and that's what that's what this is is like you you can go you know scum and villainy but you you never go full, full scum, scum and, and villainy sure. exactly and so that's what that game was and then ever since then um but, but sorry to interrupt you by the way um uh, but just oh no i'm getting ba- i'm getting back to the 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 um no this, no no this game. i know i know i know i just i need oh, to interject okay. like even though the uh lawbreakers actually oddly enough was an apt comparison here that wasn't actually the game i was thinking of I was thinking about Battleborn. That was the game that came out around oh, the same time. Oh, the Battleborn. Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. But yeah, it, with it, Battleborn, yeah. It's same, an example that's sort still of worked. the same thing, but not like slightly different. Yeah. Right. So sorry. Yeah. So so yeah. So we what we have here is we've got this like alien world thing where it's like, and and what I what I was hoping for when I saw the trailer is I was hoping we were getting a sci-fi version of um what's the the Payday, Payday, that's the game. Oh, sure, yeah. Right? That's what I was thinking of. All the way up, 
like seeing how it was going on and stuff like this, I'm like, this is going to be like a payday thing. This looks so cool. I'm so excited for this. And then they're like, first person team based shooter. And I'm like, immediately, immediately I knew, oh, this is just an Overwatch clone. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's what they're. Now, they're, it, yeah. it's got decent graphics. It looks kind of good, but Visually. It, it it is the response that what happened was. Overwatch came out, shot themselves in the foot, you know, hoisted themselves onto their own petard, and then proceeded to like lay down in a in, in an automatic like you know, um, uh, you know, in all those movies, right? There's a conveyor belt that's going towards a fiery death. <laughs> yeah, like and, the and toys at the end of Toy Story Three. Exactly, it's not right, sad. right, right. We're all just sort of sitting there with popcorn, eating it like Michael Jackson in that gift. Go ahead. Yeah, and then they, they pop themselves onto the conveyor belt willingly and then chop off all their arms and legs. And it's like, okay, right. Um, wow. Like, and, and, and we've talked to death about, like, the worst handled, one of the worst, not the worst, I think, but one of the worst handled IPs oh, yeah. for modern gaming audiences is the complete and total devastation of Overwatch that started to happen too soon before the merger in which where they could save it because you could tell that Bobby Kotick was just like no 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 whenever they're like can we have more funding can we have more people can we have more time can we have more of this can we have more anything and he's like you're not getting any more staff every staff member who quits we're not replacing them period and so you just had this like like just like this die off. It's like watching a tree in autumn. It's just you're you're losing everything every couple of days, and then eventually the wind blows through when they announce, yeah, uh, we're not doing PV, PVE because we lack the ability. I I, I really I, I hate to you know call people out, but whatever leader was running that show had a complete lack of understanding of what they could do with a PVE. Yeah, or, we've talked about that. Yeah, yeah, we've talked yeah. about that. There's a, a very simple solution to fixing that to take all that work and to combine it into one thing that works really, really well. And I've, I've been, I've gotten some, um, I can't say which because I'm under NDA for them, but I've gotten a chance to play some of the, the new shooters coming up, uh, in the, that kind of a space, you know, short, short match, you know, uh, shooters. Um, and I've got to say, excuse me, that, Imagination is the only thing that people are lacking with the new Unreal Engine, with a lot of the advancements in, in engines, and yes, I hate to say it, but AI, you can make a really good shooter that's different, that has a different feel to it, that's different enough that people would be going, yeah, I'll give that a shot. That looks really cool. But they're not doing that. Why? Because the leadership lacked the imagination. Like, they, they really did lack the... They're thinking... What is Overwatch? Overwatch is the exact same thing that you've played for the last, like, how long has it been out? I think you know, like however 2016, long it's been out. right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, that's the game. There is no other game than that. We're not doing anything else other than that. We're not increasing or, you know, doing something different or anything like that. It's, it would have been, it would have been amazing if they, their PVE mode had included, you know, third person perspective it's like that right away would have dragged in a whole bunch of people who are like yeah i've got a ton of skins that i want to see mm -hmm. and having an option for this mode an option not you know switching to it completely just an option would have been really really cool and and most pro most pro first person shooter people the complaint is that third person allows them to see through walls you know because <laughs> your, your, cam your, your camera peeking is like okay yeah i guess if that's you know um, but just overall, it's this one, it's the other one, it's some other titles that have come out, is that they've seen the blood in the water from Overwatch. They know that there's enough of an interest there that there's been this, like, kind of door opened up. So my thing is, is I think this is, I think this isn't even the beginning of it. I think no. we're going to see just a ton of new stuff coming out over the next couple of weeks. Uh... That are over the next few weeks that is just like it's the overwatch replacers and everybody's trying to fight for that and that's what this game it feels a little too rushed because it feels like 
it feels too samey. Yeah, they and got the big on, guy that absorbs yeah. all the damage. That's the tank. You got yeah, yeah, and and I really wish that an actual like you know we're at the point now where again imagination says why can't you have the the essentially the Overwatch game and the Payday game and the Helldivers game all put together. Yeah. And and just not in the same mode, obviously, but have a just a ton of different modes for a ton of different people who want to play a ton of different things. Yeah. But have it in just one game. Yeah, it's synthesize. Like, like that exactly. that's the thing that Concord doesn't really seem to really be doing here. Like yeah, it, it, it seems, seems too seems, samey, like you said. Exactly. Yeah. And and I think that there there is again, I, why I'm shocked is like why don't they include some kind of a battle royale mode in this? It's not like it's hard. Right? Like, it's just like, it's like, you, you don't have to have a hundred players. Just put like, you know, a dozen, two dozen pe- people into a small map. Have it be really, really short. And that way you're playing five minute games, right? Like, or, you know, for if you're the winner, right? So it's a, it's a really short version of it, but it adds that, that flexibility in appealing to more people. And that's where I think these Overwatch cloners are going to run into a bit of a wall because it is just overwatch yeah with a different skin on it and that's what i gotta say about the about the marvel one Same, it's like yeah. well there I, is sure. there is no progression there <laughs> yeah. it's 100 percent just like you know hey we're gonna take overwatch we're just gonna put marvel skins on it and then i bet you that they probably spent like 150 million making that game mm-hmm. if not more and they'll probably spend 150 million trying to advertise it nice. and i bet you just from looking at it it's not as smooth, it's not as good, it's not as quick, it's not as uh, satisfying as, as Overwatch. So, I don't know. I mm. think I think both of these games are going to, like, at best, they'll get, like, a middling reaction. Right. And then at worst, they'll, 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 it'll just be another, you know, Suicide Squad. Hopefully, it will sort of be the next and what we hope is a long line of these types of games failing and sort of sending a message to the industry that, hey... Just because games like Destiny 2 and Apex and yeah, like games like those exist, it's very unlikely that you're going to be able to get your own version of that because there's only so many games that people can sort of exploit FOMO, you mm-hmm. know? So yeah, um, and yeah, they mentioned Marvel Rivals as well in Sony State of Play, which from what I understand is decent, but it's decent enough to sort of become like the next big thing i don't think so but anyway uh we spent a lot of time on that oh one other thing you know at least (laughs) based on everything that i've been reading on the internet it seems like people's attitude towards concord uh who would have thought that the reception to concord would be worse than the footage that we got for silent hill (laughs) oh yeah anyway moving on god of war ragnarok on the pc that's cool um I've, I played about half of the original God of War. I still need to finish it. I can't believe it's been out for six years and I haven't finished the damn game because it's so good. I mm. love God of War, but I just haven't had the time to finish it. And it's so it's cool for people that are huge fans, but it's like for myself, it's like, oh, that's great. I'm happy for the people that get it, but no big deal for me. Dynasty Warriors Origins. Very like Muso games, Dynasty Warriors, in case you guys don't know, is a part of a category of game called Muso games where it's just really mindless hack and slash, taking down a whole bunch of guys, being really powerful. That's what Dynasty Warriors is. It's fine for the niche audience that it has. I sort of got my fill of it when I was playing Dragon Garden. I almost went insane playing that game because it's just so mind numbing. But if you enjoy it, good for you. Um, I man, you know when I saw that, I just have this love with this game series called Kingdom Under Fire. Yeah, where it's it's the same thing. You're you can take a single dude and just go fight a an enormous like endless wave of of enemies. But the thing that's really cool about that game is that you can control cavalry, infantry, sappers, ranged units, magic units, giant units, and all that kind of stuff. And then you can control them on the battlefield. At the same time, so hmm. you could be fighting in that whilst controlling a horde of of enemies. It's 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 one of the most yeah, speaking of which, it's one of the most criminally under uh, handled IPs and genres in the entire gaming industry because of of just mismanagement. Yeah. Um, but and again, it's like I think this is going to be a great game if it's less than fifty bucks. 
if it's if it's 80 to 100 bucks i think the community is going to be like nah this is too much Wait, like you talk about dynasty warriors yeah, yeah, they're not yeah. gonna sell that for maximum price. <laughs> I, I I hope not. I didn't see a price on it, so that that's my only ca- ca- capitulation you know, on whether or not that's gonna be a good game. Yeah, because it does have its market, it does have its like niche and its its genre, and and that's totally fine. Like that's yeah, that's great. That's, yeah, it's yeah. great. But it wasn't super like stellar because of that because of the kind of gameplay that it is. It's it's very monotonous, very very. Um, uh, basic in a lot of ways of like what you actually do. There's not advanced levels of strategy to it and that kind of stuff. And, and I mean, and, and that's totally fine. It's not like nobody wants to be playing a chess match at the same time that they're doing that at the same time. Right. Not everybody wants that. There is a market for it, but yeah. yeah. I, it, at, overall, it was like, great, cool. If it had come with an announcement of like 10 other games, I would have been more happy with the showcase, but yeah, being that it was one of what? Eight, I think. Um, yeah, like ten plus a couple of VR games, which I'm not even going to mention because I don't care. Um, but yeah, yeah, Sony, Sony's really going hard on the VR thing. I mean, if they think it's going to be a you know a, a win for them at some point, I guess. But mm-hmm. or I guess they have to justify the PSVR 2's existence somehow. Anyways, moving on to games that have an audience, but we're certainly not a part of it. Infinity Nikki um, looks cute. It's got nice art direction. Not really the type of game that I imagine myself playing. I'm not really super interested in a dress-up game, which is what this game is being marketed as. But it, it, it looks nice. I'm not ten out of ten, it. more most anticipated game. Of <laughs> really? Honestly, thinking about buying a PlayStation just to play that game. Uh, no, you're being sarcastic, right? Oh, sorry. No, I meant I meant Mooney. That's what. Oh, Mooney's. sure, sure, sure. Yeah, Moon. I, I have no doubt would love I'm it. I'm just kidding. No, it's um, it, the thing that the thing that. So I think those games are great. Like yeah. I really, I, I genuinely do. Mooney does actually play a dress-up game. Uh, it's not on the PC. It's on her phone, and it's one of the f- it's one of the games that she plays like right before she goes to bed each night. Mm-hmm. So it's like she she doesn't spend any money on it. She just has it because it's a cute thing. Doing cute, you know, having cute girls do cute things. Um, I didn't get her reaction on this one because she she we've we've had a very hectic week. Sure. But um, it is something that I think is kind of cool. But the coolest thing of the entire trailer was the last, like, five seconds of it. Yeah, where Queen Marika from Elden Ring shows up. Right? And, <laughs> and I'm like, wait, 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 wait. There's a deep plot in this? Is there is there a deep, subtle um, edge to this game? Mm-hmm. Because that would... The, again, where where I've said with some of the other games, it's like they're not evolving, they're not coming up with something new. Doing this is again probably not the market audience for it, but having that subtle edge, if they do it correctly, and I don't know until it actually comes out and we see some reviews on it, but doing that correctly, I think that is one of the bigger, bolder, more interesting moves of any of the games mentioned today. Agree uh, in in the showcase. Yeah, Be- because it's that subversion of expectations and the the increasing of a genre outside of its of its most narrow form and so strangely enough the one game that that you know we probably won't play i think (laughs) and quite honestly has probably got some of the most heart in it as far as like doing something new and i think that's super cool so this one i was kind of like a lot of people were kind of like lols joke you know whatever and i'm like Nah, this studio, if they do this right, you know, that that really can expand the door to new gamers, new audiences, stuff like that. And it's the most brilliant move that I've seen out of all of the games, which is super weird to say. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, but you're right, man. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, uh, oddly enough, it, it's very ironic, but yeah, you're probably not going to play it's it. It's kind of weird. <laughs> Yeah. It's kind of weird. Now, but, yeah, speaking of uh, games that aren't really um, going beyond sort of uh, the established formula, uh, Ballad of Antara, I mean, it's not Bloodborne for PC or Bloodborne mm-hmm. 2, but I mean, I, it's close enough, I suppose. Yeah, like the entire time I'm watching it, it's just like, okay, well, we know where they're getting their inspirations from. The main yeah, character exactly. looks like Sekiro, for God's sake. Um, sure. I mean, like, if it's an eight, like if I'm seeing reviews for it that where it's like a seven, eight, nine, 
out of 10 across the board, yeah, I'll probably check it out because I am into the Soulsborne type of genre. But if it, it's sort of like Steel Rising type of Soulsborne or you know, OG Lords of the Fallen, probably not going to pick it up. Mm. And um, yeah, any thoughts on that? Um, yeah, it looks interesting. Again, like w- my criticism of anything that is a um, a chaser of the of the you know the flavor of the month, so to speak. Obviously, it's not the flavor of the month. It's it's more like the flavor of the last like five six years. It's really come up in its popularity for that genre um and and i like it i've got several i have several um bloodborne type games or or dark soulsy type games like yeah. i i've played a couple of them i got a couple of them I, I like i like the ones that i like um i i i get irritated with the ones that i don't like that don't either have a character or have a world that i'm i'm super interested in um i i think that there's there is some cool things that people have done with like silent protagonists or or telling the the, the story through the combat, which is a very interesting way of looking at at some of these games that have come out recently and then fairly masterful. Um, but again, as I as I just said, what the thing that we we want to see with some of these games is we want to see a little bit of evolution in the in the kind of like idea that they're chasing. Yeah. And I don't know if this one will have it, but at the same time, I don't know if this one needs it because in some cases, really what some people are looking for is just another like very quick thing, right? Mm. And and not to say that, you know, not to like go backwards on what I just said about the previous game, but it it is this kind of thing where it's like, as long as you're not overcharging, there's no reason why you can't just keep coming out with similar type entries into certain genres if it's right? good if, yeah, if, if you do if a, good, something yeah. that is sort of semi evolving the core gameplay without doing anything radically different sometimes it can work like lies of p that game yeah. is like through and through a very very familiar game but the combat was just so damned good and though it was familiar it did enough interesting things with it to warrant its purchase so if something like Battle of Antara could do something similar, that would be fine. It doesn't have to do anything radically different. But, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Oh, excuse me. So, um, on that note, also, uh, Where Winds Meet, that's the next game that they showed off. Looks solid. Um, I I don't know if I'll get it, though. Again, it'll be just sort of like with Battle of Antara. If I hear like it's getting 7 out of 10s through 9 out of 10s across the board, I'll probably check it out. But at the moment, what is it? it it's a game where... It's in an East Asian setting with a lot of mystical elements. I've sort of gotten my feel my feel of that recently mm-hmm. by playing games like Neo, Wolong, uh, from Team Ninja. But again, it, like I said, if it does something where it makes the combat feel even better, then sure, I'll check it out. Yeah. Um, until Dawn, yeah, sure. Like I'm, I think it's good to remaster it because I don't know if you played the PS4 version of this recently, side, but it runs like crap, and uh, I think it really does deserve some sort of graphical update. And it's a really, yeah. it's a good game. I don't know if you ever played the original There's, Until Dawn, but it's um, special. I, I really, I really hate cheesy. Um, what is that exact genre called? Uh, like, ser- is, it, yeah. is it called the, like serial killer? genre or like monster shoot i'm not sure i know what which... you mean yeah it's like cinematic yeah. choice yeah, it's based like yeah. freddy krueger type you know those kinds of movies but they make it in game form and I most think of them suck definitely... i agree with you but this one was yeah, good most, most most of them do suck i think the i think the storytelling of the way that they play the storytelling in this one is 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 better than the average um is certainly better than the um than you know what we typically have in this field and i do play a lot of i do play a lot of horror games um but they're usually like really different and very very indie uh so this one this one i've never really been that interested in i think it's um i think it's because of the I think it's because of the, of the acting. It's a little, little over the top. Little it reminds me a little too much of Freddy Krueger, not in the violence, but in the um, in the plot points and stuff like that. <laughs> sure, sure, yeah. So, so yeah, I think I think 
yes, you know, obviously doing a remake is good. At first, I thought it was going to be a continuation, but then I was like, wait a second, this just looks like a remake. Yeah. So I don't know if they're adding any new content to it or I don't think so. elaborating on the story a little bit. Yeah. It's like stuff like that would be kind of cool. So fingers crossed that that it serves that that community that enjoys that kind of stuff and you know properly. So sure. yeah. Yeah, not much, not much to say on it past that. And then just a couple more things. Path of Exile 2. I know my buddy Elliot is going to be happy, but well, no, not necessarily because he only plays on the PC. What the hell am I talking about? OK, fine. People who have seen other people play Path of Exile on the PC and thought it looked cool. I'm sure they're going to be happy that it's going to PS5. Looks like a great game. I I don't know what else to say about it. Um, I, I don't typically play those top down types of games. Mm. Maybe I should, but they just look too addicting. Um, and then finally, probably the best thing, like we just mentioned off the top, Monster Hunter Wilds. I mean, Capcom has been killing it lately. Monster mm-hmm. Hunter World was a huge phenomenon, and a lot of people love it. And I have no doubt that if like they do what they have with a lot of their core franchises, where they just take the core gameplay and evolve it in all the right ways, it'll become another big thing. Just, yeah. So, And the footage we saw looks really good. I'm probably going to play it. I'm probably going to play it with my wife. So... Kudos, at least in regards to that reveal. We still yeah. don't have a release date, but yeah, 2025 sometime then. Yeah. Uh, so I have any other thoughts on Monster Hunter Wilds? Um, I was glad to see that this is also coming to PC. So I and I and I kind of checked that immediately. I was like, this is coming to PC, right? And I looked it up and uh, yeah, it is it is already on Steam. Nice. Um, so really, I am really excited for it. Um, I think. I've never been able to really, I've played a bunch of the Monster Hunter games, but I've never been able to have the time. It's And it's not because of of anything other than just bad timing, right? Like it's always come yeah. down to just bad timing. Haven't been able to like connect with, with the, the ability to like get into it. A bunch of our community members play Monster Hunter, um, the, the um, online MMO-ish one. Yeah. And they love it. And I, I've watched a bunch of them play and, and it's just it does look really really good this looks good i i'm excited to see kind of like where they're going from here i i do love the idea of like having the big just having a game where it just goes from big boss fight to big boss fight terra was was really like that back in the in, in its heyday it's like it's like taking on um you know big monsters solo and that's just really cool and there is a really awesome thing for that and i and i love yeah. the the idea, the concept, I think that it's great, and I want to, I want to see some success in this, and and this does look like they're moving in that direction. So yay for that, yep. um, and uh, yeah, so I'm I'm looking forward to it. I think that this is a, a, a potentially a really solid move in this direction, and that's perfectly fine. Yeah. Outside of uh, Shadow of the Colossus, I think it's pretty safe to say that Capcom, when it comes to the big battles against big monsters, they tend to do it better than anybody else. Dragon Dogma, anybody? All right, those are all the main things that we want to talk about in regards to the Sony state of play. Overall, it seems like the general consensus was that it was disappointing. And it sounded like, you know, for people like Saib and I were like the people online that were expecting GTA 6 to show up that this thing yeah like that was ever gonna happen no it's like we have reasonable expectations but it, it was somewhat disappointing because aside from the monster hunter wild stuff there's nothing that really stood out to us as like ooh, i really gotta play that oh my god now nah, so anyway um before we move on to other stuff we do have to mention one last thing that was sh- like briefly shown at the sony state of play but then obviously had its uh, own showcase immediately after it for some reason the silent hill stuff now We're not going to go into too much detail because we do have other stuff to talk about. If you want to hear my full thoughts on the release date trailer that was shown at the Sony State of Play, as well as everything that was shown at the transmission after that, you can go to my personal channel, which I will link in the description box below. It's the two most recent videos at the time of this recording. Saib, I had like barely any hope. (laughs) That that's sort of what it's like being a Silent Hill fan nowadays. Um, Like. (laughs) <laughs> Silent Hill Ascension was an abomination unto God our Lord. I wanted a personal <laughs> apology 
from that, from not just Konami, but from the Vatican, because I don't understand why God would allow it to happen. Um, Silent Hill, the short message was mixed at best. And like a lot of the stuff that they were doing to try and promote the Silent Hill 2 remake was really pissing me off and a lot of people off because it just seems so tone deaf. Yeah, because when I play Silent Hill, I want to play Resident Evil, right? But Sybe, they... At least for me, and it's, you know, there's a certain a significant minority of people who watch this stuff and were not impressed by it. And I think a lot of people have some decent arguments from that side. But for myself, and clearly for a lot of people, there's a lot of positivity going on about it. And mm-hmm. there, there's good reason for it. Like everything they showed us during this transmission, for the most part, made me feel more optimism for. Not just the Silent Hill 2 remake, but the entire um, franchise as a whole. The I was a little bit more sold on the combat, which I've been really worried about. But the stuff that they showed, uh, though still looking janky, does look workable and could add to the experience. The environments look amazing. I love the stuff that they're doing with most of the characters, especially the little girl character named Laura. She looks, she looks, and she's acting awesome and creepy as hell. It's just, it's hard to explain in case you haven't seen the footage, but it's just wonderful. Um, yeah, obviously the music's great because it's Silent Hill. Uh, I do have a few complaints about like some technical aspects here and there, and um, uh, maybe like one or two things that they might be doing with the story but overall i I was i was very pleasantly surprised and i never thought i would say that as a silent hill fan ever again um but yeah majority of my thoughts are over there i want to throw it over to side so we can move on uh and then we can move on sorry um side i'm pretty sure you didn't see the transmission but you did see the release date trailer uh during the yeah. sony state of play any thoughts yeah um so it 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 looks interesting so far. Um, I do have some kind of like twinge going on of like this doesn't this doesn't seem quite as good as it should be. Hmm. But that is based off of nothing but just my immediate gut reaction. I hope that it's good. I hope that they are respecting the. Um, you know, everything that has gone on in the previous games, I hope that they understand the symbolism and the meaning and that they don't go off some on some random goose chase. Um, I hope that's what happens. Uh, and and I'm fairly, con- like, it looks like it is potentially, but I don't know. Yeah. It's one of these things where it's like, I, I don't have a good enough feel on the, the community that plays this stuff to see whether or not it will actually do good. So I'm Hopefully, I'm uh, what was was that term? I'm going to cross my fingers and hope for the best. Yeah, you're you know, cautiously I'm, I'm optimistic, hope, like I am. That's the word I was looking for. I'm cautiously cautiously optimistic, and I hope that we don't again get the the gamers, the fans don't get treated um, poorly because of this. And and yeah, so but but that said, is like it's like it's really hard to trust. Konami. Most gaming studios, and especially Konami, yeah. obviously, like just just in general, it's like there's there's just the general difficulty of trusting any game studio right now, and then there's the added difficulty of trusting companies like Konami, like um, EA, like you know Blizzard. It's like it's like they've let us down so much, you know. When when is the other shoe gonna drop? And that's sort of what I'm I'm looking at here, and crossing my fingers and hope that they don't screw up on so yeah Yeah. uh trust me i'm gonna be very cautious with my any optimism that i have leading up to its release because it is konami but yeah i I gotta give kudos where it's due that the the showcase was actually quite done well and they did show us some stuff about the movie but barely anything there to really comment on aside from the fact that visually the things look good but we already knew that was going to happen because the first silent hill movie looked visually great but uh the story was a little bit, you know, left a little bit to be desired. Uh, so, yeah, that's about it. Um, and finally, we got a release date, October 8th, finally. So, what, just over four months from now? Perfect. Okay, moving on. Uh, we got some rumors, some game rumors. Let's talk about Fallout 3. We've been talking about uh, a remake in for that game for a little while. And uh, apparently things are heating up. 
uh, what is it? We got this news from Juicehead. Is that it? So, well, so everybody's talking about it right now. Okay. Literally everybody is talking about it. Mr. Maddie, all the, the, all the big players in the Fallout community are talking about this, these rumors of Fallout 3 coming out possibly this year. This and year. Wow. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's the, that's the, now we know that, that they hid in the, in, and I think we mentioned this before in the commercial that they had in the actual TV show for fallout, they actually had a number that you could call. And if you call that number, you actually get, um, a response of mm. people screaming inside of an underground building. And then past that, if you text them and say, Hey, is this vault tech? They'll respond with, yes. Would you like to join one of our vaults? More information will be coming in, uh, what was it? 33 or 34 weeks yeah. or something like that. Putting it, placing it right in the fall window in which Bethesda primarily loves to release their games. So it's, this is kind of insane and kind of cool all, all at once, but just to kind of like, um, to, to put a, a bit of a, uh, I don't want to put the fire out, but just to kind of like warn people is like, I, I am probably one of the more connected people who's connected to, um, development Bethesda and, and specifically the, like the, the fallout, you know, content producers online. I mean, we've, we posted interviews with some, uh, with, with one of the primary writers of the fallout universe, universe. Um, and I've got to say that right now, getting anything out of Bethesda is impossible. Mm. There is no, that, that is, that, there is watertight, but this is a watertight container inside another watertight container inside another watertight container that has a, that has a, an active apparatus that is seeking out anybody looking for water leaks. That's what's going on here. And it's, and it's crazy. If anybody says that they have the inside, you know, you know, info on this, you can't believe them because right now the biggest leaker of fallout, potential fallout games and insider information is literally Todd Howard right now. Yeah. It's, he, he went on a podcast and he mentioned casually about two other projects in the fallout universe that were going on at other studios. and. Um, yeah, so I, I wouldn't like, don't believe anybody who says that they got, they got the stuff. Wait, 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 what are you talking about? Isn't it quite obvious that Elder Scrolls six is taking place in Valenwood? (laughs) Right. (laughs) Sorry. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Do not quote me on that. (laughs) So it's, it's just this insane amount of like, um, people, I don't know whether they're collectively wishing something into existence. I would definitely say that that's probably like in the, in the, that's probably very uh, possible right now, but it is also kind of just like there is, it is so hard to get information out mm-hmm. of that studio right now. Um, there's no way to verify anything that comes out. There's everybody is super tight lipped. And, and I just like, that's how it's always been with, with Bethesda. Oh, yeah. I've been able to like, um, you know, the, the biggest amounts of leaks that you get out of Bethesda is again, their own staff doing their own staff, regular things. And, and one of the biggest ways to get information on upcoming Bethesda games is literally to look at the, the trademark filings that they're filing. Um, and that's how you get a lot of information. So you get a lot of information from trademark filings. You get a lot of information from LinkedIn. You get a lot of information from job posting stuff like that. But this has been super, 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 super tight. And, um, I've been told that some of the, the jobs that people have been, you know, recruiting for, it's like they, in order to just like, in order to get their, their foot in the door to even try to figure out like if they can, they, if they can apply for a job, they have to go through an NDA process. So yeah. that is like, just to submit your application for a job, which is insane. Um, so yeah, there, there is there is obviously the super hunger and the super thirst for more follow content. People really, really, really want to get this. People really, really want to play around with of this. Of course, and it's hot but, right now. Yeah, and it's super hot right now. So we're hoping that one of these things that they've got working happens to have lined up for this. I will say um, that that you know they do have lots of stuff going on with Fallout 76, and they've got a new expansion coming for that, and that'll oh. be out next month. And it, it is 
actually Fallout seventy six is is I think it it beats even um, No Man's Sky for the turnaround that they've had. It is actually a good game now. It is actually fun to play, and I have my biggest bugs that I have encountered after like three months of like playing this almost every day for at least a little bit has been I've had like two crashes. Wow, that's impressive for and that's after having played for like six or seven hours at at a time. Yeah, right. So it's like it's like this is not there's it's very anti like you know how it comes out how most Bethesda products come out. It's actually pretty good. Um, I wouldn't advise that you pick it up right now. I'd advise that you wait until the new expansion comes out um, and then just play the the content. It, it was crazy. So even today, me and, and uh, one of our community members were running around on the map and we discovered a little like mini town that we didn't even know was there. Oh, and we're level three hundred. Like we're, I'm, I'm level, I'm level three hundred. My, my buddy's way north of, of uh, I think four hundred. Mm. And another person that we play with um, is, is again way above north four hundred. And none of us knew that this place existed and had NPCs that we could like talk to and find out a bunch of lore on and stuff like that. And we were just like, wow. When did they add this? <laughs> Apparently, it had been in for over a year now. So it's like, all right, well, you know, this this map is big, and they're adding to it. They're adding a whole new section to it. They're adding more content content to it. So fingers crossed that they keep doing it. It looks like it's solid, so that's good. But people still want that original single player Fallout experience. Right. There is a ton of stuff that is potential for it. You know, they 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 always had this opportunity to redo one and two you know fallout one is actually a really tiny game it Mm -hmm. is is a very small game people forget how small it is there's lots of random encounters in it but overall the actual map space is like there's only like i think there's less than three dozen maps Hmm. so that's tiny that's That's like three dozen locations yeah yeah it's and it's less than that it's not it's not more um so that that's kind of crazy. It's like you know, there's there's a, places that you go to that if you know what you're, you know, speed runners could speed run Fallout four, Fallout One. I think they can do it in less than like ten minutes, <laughs> not using any like super cheats or anything like that, but just like doing things in an interesting, quick way. And, and you know, it's not a it's not a scale for it, but yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. So what what are the exact rumors for the Fallout Three remake? So the rumors are just a mass of rumors that it that it was on the list. So so years ago there was a leak uh, was put out by somebody doing something stupid, and they put out a uh, basically their whole list of plans for content going forward, yeah. and that list has been about ninety percent accurate. And Ooh. the the only thing that isn't accurate is the is the fact that clearly some of these things have been delayed due to COVID and other stuff like that. So Fallout 3 was always on that list. Mm. Um, I think that the smartest thing that they should have, that they could do is, and, and I really want them to do this. It's like, I don't, I want them to come out with Fallout 3 remaster, but at the same time remaster uh, New Vegas. Yes. Because it's the same engine. Um, there's a lot of improvements that were made to New Vegas that could be ported over to retroactively into fallout three because there's a whole faction system there's a disguises there's uh there is a a, a a survival system that you can turn on natively in fallout new vegas and all of those things are improvements over top of fallout three and i would hope that what they would do is they would take everything they would rebuild that stuff you know you know back into it take the top most you know, downloaded mods and see about adding in as much of that stuff. And I have reason to believe that this is something that they are potentially doing because there have been a lot of Fallout content creators in in the mod sphere that have been hired over at uh, Bethesda. And mm-hmm. I don't mean just a small number. I mean a lot of people. Eleonora, who did these amazing um, house builds in Skyrim, she now works there. It's one of the reasons why the actual like living spaces in Starfield were actually good for a change. Ah, right? Like, like okay. there were there were a bunch of issues with the game, of course, obviously, but the the living space, the succulents, the 
the cute little things, the way that you had this really interesting displays within the, within the ships and within some of the homes, that they looked like actual lived places, right? Like Skyrim, sometimes you walk into one of those rooms, like some of the, the vanilla stuff, and you're like, this is insane. Like, some of them are really great, but, but a lot of them are kind of bland and bleh. But when you compare it to, like, what Eleonora and some of the other people created, it is off the books. Now, I have heard rumors that a good chunk of the Fallout 3 content mod creators who are making, were making stuff, even as up to just recently in the last year or two, suddenly a lot of them have gone dark. But uh, still active. Okay. So, I, I, again, part of the many rumor mills. There could be a hundred reasons for why that's happening, but there's also one convenient reason why that would be happening to a lot of them. And that is that Bethesda went out and basically hired a ton of people who make mods yeah. and said, you know, the engine, you've been working with it constantly for the last like decade, in some cases, decade, would you be interested in coming over here and making this? There was a project to make Fallout 1 and Fallout 2 inside of the Fallout 3 engine. Um, and inside the Fallout 4 engine, there's hmm. been, you know, we've got, we've got tons of, we've got Fallout Brazil, Fallout London, a bunch of other projects. Uh, there was, um, somebody took one of the missions from Fallout 3 and incorporated it into Fallout 4 as a, as a mod pack. Hey. And it was really ridiculously good. <laughs> I remember playing through it on the original in, in Fallout 3 and I always liked it and I always liked the characters, but then they, they seamlessly transported it over to Fallout 4. So this can totally happen. And it's not just that we, I, I want like a slight improvement to graphics and stuff like that. No, 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 no. If we can take where the engine is right now with like Starfield and rebuild, you know, Fallout, you know, 3 and New Vegas and Fallout 4 in that new engine with the new animations and with all this other stuff, it's like that could really open the door to what they could do. And then there is this other rumor that's been going around for a, for a very long time, and I kind of doubted it when I first heard it, is that they have an engine that clones the current engine, and then you play graphically what's happening in the um, in the new engine, but it's getting all of the lore, story, interactions, dialogue, quest stuff, uh, triggers, all that stuff. You're playing that still. It's running the old engine at the same time. And basically uh, you're just playing this thing that's got the super skin on it. Kind of like technology... um, the Halo 1 and 2 remasters, right? Yeah, yeah. So the, the technology has been around, but it was the, this was posted... Uh, specifically by some small company that wasn't associated with anybody and they talked about it as if they were running the contract and it was very sus on multiple levels like lots of lots of people were like what is going on here this doesn't this doesn't make any sense like these guys aren't the best in their field but you know stuff like that who knows what um so yeah there is just this giant space for new fallout content coming your way Hopefully next week. Right. <laughs> yeah, I was about to... Okay, that was what I was about to ask you about. So, obviously, like... Fallout's, we're, we're getting... Yeah. So, as far as I can confirm, we're getting something Fallout. Yeah. Guaranteed, there is a Fallout uh, window having been posted, essentially, in the in the, the list of stuff coming out. That's obviously an absolute no-brainer and doesn't actually require any inside information because... As I've covered, we've got tons of Fallout content coming out. So is it just, you know, new 76 announcements, stuff like that? Is it, you know, is Todd going to appear in a video go, you know, we're working on this, that, the other thing. But, you, you know, and here's a teaser for this, something coming up. Stay tuned for this fall. Or are we going to get what he he's always talked about wanting to do and what, what they've always kind of pressure, press, uh, pressured um, their their side to do? is make the game when it's ready they just announce it yeah and then they're like yeah, yeah and you can play this tomorrow you know starting to <laughs> tomorrow right but they had that sort of that approach has somewhat changed now that they're under microsoft because they did um, show a bunch of stuff like a year beforehand with starfield yes, right yes but i think that was one of those things where it's like it was definitely pressured for them to do that um 
by a number of different sources. So exactly what's going on here now, it's easier, it's hard to hide a big project like that, right? Like everybody's going to be asking them nonstop about Elder Scrolls stuff for the next, you know, until it's released. Mm, as obviously. they should. <laughs> um, but a, a hidden remake of Fallout 1 or 2 or a, a complete remaster Fallout 3 is something that they can get underneath the radar a lot easier. Because again, Fallout 1 is actually really tiny. If you if you gave somebody who was really skilled in it, if you gave them like 40 people and they hunkered down into a literal vault, they could pump out that uh, a special, amazing, really cool remake in less than three years if they knew what they were doing. Yeah. So it, it's stuff like that 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 is the that does have the the sort of like their wild card right now. And I'm hoping that they were forward thinking enough to say, hey, we're going to have this Amazon TV show It'd be a really good idea if we could follow it up with a new game release, because that would just, you know, make sense and would be really cool and would actually, you know, would actually be good. Yeah. But whether or not that's actually going to happen. Yeah. We'll see I don't know. in uh, on June 9th, I believe, although they might do something on June 7th during Summer Game Fest, but they have their own showcase on June 9th. Either one of those days. We'll find out then. Now, mm -hmm. moving on to the final story. Speaking of uh, things that are likely to be announced on June 9th at the Xbox Showcase. You know, the Doom, you know, Doom, the, the more recent takes on Doom by id Software, Doom 2016 and obviously Doom Eternal in 2020. Those games are so freaking good. They are. Yep. Mm, 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 they were so tasty, and if it weren't for like one or two games coming out in those years that were slightly better, they would have easily gotten Game of the Year awards. They were just, they captured just that visceral joy that all men have or want to have when they're playing shooty shooty video games. That's what Doom is. But it's yeah. been four years, Sib, since uh, it's been over four years since uh, Doom Eternal, if you can believe it. And now I think it's about time that we hear something about it. And apparently, according to Insider Gaming, we will be finding out more information about the next Doom on June 9th at the Xbox Showcase. Moreover, we actually might have some info as to what exactly is going to be happening in the game. So, according to them, we have a subtitle. It's going to be called Doom the Dark Ages. And apparently yep. it's going to be a more medieval setting set in the past, so I'm assuming not after the events of Doom 2016 and 2020, but before yeah. that, sort of going into the history of Doom Guy, because they did try to set that up a little bit in Doom Eternal, but I'm imagining we're going to go really in-depth with his history with, um, what was the name of that planet, and like the warrior gods, and how he joined alongside them and fought the big demons and just became this like renowned warrior. That sounds cool. That, that sounds really dope. Um, because it is Doom... I'm going to look forward to it, and I'm going to be happy to see whatever they ha have to show. I am concerned about how much of the soul of the last two games is going to be preserved, because obviously Mick Gordon isn't going to be a part of the project anymore. And, man, Cy, like when it comes to music, making so much of the positive identity of a yeah. game... Mick Gordon and Doom is right up there with the likes of Nobuo Ematsu with Final Fantasy and Marty O'Donnell with Halo. It's gonna be it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be really tough. But nonetheless, just outside of the music, because it got so many other stuff things right, I'm gonna be looking forward to this. Um, yeah. Sab, your thoughts on like what do you think about this approach? Are you excited for Doom Three? So. Aside from the this, whole first person thing, which you have to work through, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, I and I've never, I've never said that that Doom should be third person. I, I always say whenever, especially a game is is like rooted Doom. in in the yeah. FPS thing, it's like it's like it would be a nice thing. Like obviously, I don't expect it because it it is part of the I you know iconography of what it is and and whatnot and and just being being that that way. Uh man, I try to watch a video. Um, so I've been, of course, I've been scraping news like crazy. Yeah. And I watched a, a video where somebody was talking about some of the new rumors. And in the background, they were playing Doom. And it's like, I got so sick so fast. You're bouncing I got around so sick all so fast. over the place. And it's so I, fast. 
Yeah, I just I just couldn't. Now I have another uh, friend who has motion sickness, and and Doom doesn't bother it for them. Uh, for, for and and th- that happens. There's some games where. You know, it's not nearly as bad as others and, and stuff like that. It's like like Fallout. I could play Fall. I could play a lot of Fallout in first person, um, but just the the ability to just hit a button and immediately go into third person or scroll out a little bit is super. I mean, it's just super super handy. Sure. Um, but but overall, I am excited from this mostly from the the story perspective. I think Doom is a wonderful example of what they can do when they are actually interested in creating a storyline for a game that really doesn't have that much of a storyline. Yeah. Um, I think that, I think the doom franchise is in an amazing place, especially if this leak turns out to be true, especially because what this shows is that they're willing to try new things, that they're willing to push in new directions and you bet yourself there's going to be a boatload of new lore coming with this too. So I, and I'm, and I'm really hoping that this turns out to be true. Um, and that they do take some liberties. I would absolutely love it. I will, I will, um, I will buy it immediately if this, if they come out and it's like, oh yeah, this is also third person. You don't have to, it's just, there is an option if you want to, you know, for, for the, the single player content, I will 100% buy the game that day just to support that kind of thinking. But the, to focus on the stuff that's really important for most Doom fans is the story, the combat, the, the stuff like this. Would this game work in this dark age, you know, past story kind of thing? Hundred percent, like hundred percent. This would this would work in that. In fact, that yeah. would be even more awesome and more of the lore being exposed as to like where, you know, where the what was the initial incursion? What happened to actually you know bridge the two worlds initially, and how much more is there? There is so much you could do with the doom universe. And I'm not talking about like just making more stuff. I think they could honestly, honestly, they could make a really good TV show set in like a 19, uh, probably like 1970, 1980 kind of world where there's a detective like looking into, you know, some weird murders and stuff. And it's, it's actually a part of the doom universe. It's like, that would be cool. Mm. Anything from the past would be cool. Any sci-fi future thing would be cool. All they got to do is lay the groundwork of doing more stuff and having more varied stories. And this is where I think they can potentially like really have something that's quite cool. And I think, I think it works. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I like fingers crossed. I really, I really hope that they're, they're going to nail this. I really hope that all of the best rumors that I've heard are all true. If it is, what we're going to have is we're going to have the, the first kind of like, it's not going to be potentially the first time that the, the doom universe, like that the demons like entered our world, but it'll show one of the big first incursions Yeah, and where the first initial, you know, hero's bloodline started at. Mm -hmm. And that's so cool because they have connected this to like even commander keen and, and other IPs. It's like, yes, please do this, do it in a right way. That makes us just, you know, get up from the, our chairs and shout. Yes. Yes. That's what we want. That's what doom's all about. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And if they can, if they can nail that, I think this this will be the the biggest step forward to Doom becoming this like key pillar franchise that could quite possibly replace Halo as this like central pillar to to uh, to Microsoft's plan in the gaming universe going forward. Yeah. So yeah, fingers crossed. The rumors are uh, there's many of them. There's tons of um, leaked reports, leaked data. There's some. Um, there's some technical leaks that have come out that are really pointing to this. Um, I think that this is, I think we are definitely getting a new doom product. Uh, I think we're, I think that's a, an absolute given, um, but where it'll go and exactly how well it'll hit and all that kind of stuff, we have no idea. So fingers crossed and stay hopefully optimistic yeah i i have faith that at the very least it'll be good like aside from the fact that mick gordon's there they have a very talented bunch of people <laughs> over at id uh working mm-hmm. on these games and i have full faith that they have a lot of really cool ideas in mind and yeah it, it that's the thing about doom that we were talking about a whole bunch of stuff that didn't really have that 
factor that makes it stand out. That's what Doom has. It, it's just so mm. full of charm, which is weird to say because it's all about blood and guts and killing demons. Uh, but it does. So, yeah. And uh, stuff that we're hearing sounds good. So we'll find out more. I imagine like it's pretty safe bet that we'll hear more on June 9th. Anyways, that does it for us, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning into Maximum News. Uh, it's going to be a really, really packed week of news. Uh, maybe not when we record this next, but certainly like the day or so after the Summer Game Fest and the Xbox Showcase and everything else that's happening. So stay tuned. Make sure to hit subscribe. That helps us out a lot. Make sure to hit like. Uh, make sure to hit the like button on this particular episode. It helps out not just this video, but all the other videos on the Triple S League main channel. So I want to thank you, as always, for doing the show with me. Uh, anything you want to say before we uh, wrap up here? Yeah, um, so I'm going through some... Uh, um, we, we've had some stuff hit us here on this on crazy side of things, and I'll, I'm, I'm doing a, a short move for a work contract. So it's going to be a little, little hectic over the next few weeks. Um, but we still got lots of fallout content planned and we're going to be following this news as closely as we can. I really hope that, and my, my plan is to stream the, uh, the showcases coming up, um, at the very bare minimum, we'll be streaming it inside the discord and we'll be talking about stuff that we see, and then we'll be responding and reacting to it, but we've still got a bunch of other things planned. It's just a matter of like getting the things to actually come to fruition. So sure. Yeah, <laughs> I don't envy you, man. Um, but we'll, we'll get it. We'll get it sorted. And uh, you guys could just find me on all the regular forms of social media, just at Max Starrett. Uh, like I said before, I want to talk about the Silent Hill stuff. My channel, a link to it, is in the description box below. Make sure to go check out my videos on Silent Hill and all the other stuff that I do analysis on. Sometimes I talk about anime if you're into that, mostly video games. Yeah, love to see you over there. All right, guys. Until we do this again next week, I want to remind you as always, and as per usual, stay yellow. Bye.